Right, we've got a linear system here of um, three simultaneous equations. And we're going to solve it in the same way as we did the other day um, by finding the inverse of the matrix of coefficients. But we're going to find this inverse in a different way. So we'll get right into it. We're going to write something called an augmenting matrix. So we're going to write the coefficients 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1 minus 1, 1, 2 and then we're just going to do this dotted line and on the other side for this method we write the identity matrix of the size and just a, this method that we're going to do works for a 2x2 two two matrix as well but it's just quicker to find the inverse the way whereas for 3x3 three three it's about the same what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract the rows from each other in particular ways to manipulate this matrix to get the inverse. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make these two components zero. And I'm not going to go through all the manipula um, manipulation. I'm going to show you the row operations I used. Um, but if you know I go like, then this is how you find this. It's going to get tedious. But so to find these two. We basically if we use row one and we add or subtract row one to rows two and three in a particular way to make these elements zero. And these row and column operations give us the top row remains unchanged, obviously. And we get a zero, zero, as we wanted. Um, comes out as five over two, one half, three over two, five over two, um, minus a half, one, zero, one half zero one and the key is whatever you do you have to do it all across so on both sides of the old matrix this is really just like one big matrix all right now we want to make this element zero and we don't want to use row one because if we use row one we're going to get rid of one of the zeros we've already created so we're going to use row two so the operation we're going to do is row three is goes to row three minus three fifths uh, row two and this gives us again the top row remains unchanged two one 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 nor nor gives us a naught, naught, a naught here like we wanted, uh, 5 over 2 remains, half still here, and this is now 11 over 5, uh, minus 1 half, 1 naught, and then on the bottom not half sorry because remember we subtract three fifths of the second row from all of the third row um, yeah here we have four fifths minus three fifths one I mean, that's not neat at all but you get the point um, now we want to get these two are zeros so the operation we're going to do is we're going to, try, we're going to use row 3 row 1 goes to row 1 
minus 511 row 3 and this method might seem long but the benefit of this is it, it goes on like it's the same thing every time you go in the same order you just have to change the coefficients of what you subtract and depending on the numbers in the problem um, and for 3 by 3 it takes about the same amount of time as finding the inverse in, in the, like the classic way as such but for 4x4 four four and higher dimensions it's much quicker right and this gives us two one zero on the top row there um, seven elevenths three elevenths minus five elevenths and we want zero five over two zero 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 eleven over five the second one on this side one minus fifteen over twenty two twenty five over twenty two minus five over twenty two four fifths minus three fifths one right now the final zero we want to create because what we're doing is we're working towards having this left hand side be in the identity matrix so that's the method but I'm just showing you how we do that step by step because you the only real way to do it is in this particular order we want to turn this one into a zero so we have to use row two because we can subtract whatever zero as many times we want from one whenever we get zero so the operation we have to do is row one goes to row one minus two fifths row two this gives us two zero 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 five over two zero 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 eleven over five And then on the other side, we get 10 elevenths minus 2 elevenths minus 4 elevenths. We get minus 15 over 22, 25 over 22, minus 5 over 22, uh, 4 fifths. Minus three fifths and one, and we are almost finished now. The only thing left to do to get rid of what to make these ones is to divide each row by a um, particular coefficient. So row one goes to one half, row one. Row two goes to two fifths. Row two and row three goes to five elevenths. Row three and that gives us as we want one, one, one. No, 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 one. And now on the right hand side, this is our desired result. This is our inverse of our original matrix. So 5 11 minus 1 over 11, minus 2 over 11, minus 3 over 11, 5 over 11, minus 1 over 11, 4 over 11, minus 3 over 11. And five over eleven.
So to solve for x, y, and z, our original coefficients matrix is 2, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, and 2. Multiply that by x, y, z. Yeah, so multiply by x, y, z, and this is equal to 7, 12, 6. We're going to multiply both sides by our inverse here. So this side just becomes x, y, z, and I've already shown you how to multiply through by inverses, so we won't go through the trouble of that, but when you multiply this inverse by 7, 12, 6 from the front, so this is the first matrix followed by this one, you get the matrix 1, 3, 2, which means x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3, and z is equal to 2, which is the solution. There you go, a bit of a long video today, but it was helpful, and please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one.